Welcome to Boating Tips Live with Marine Max, your weekly chat about boating products, service, safety, advice, and a whole lot more. Join the fun by submitting your boating questions answered on air by our knowledgeable captains. Without further ado, let's start the show. Start the show. You like that, Andy? <laughs> that was a, that's a solid intro. <laughs> It is. It's like uh, it feels like I'm going out of a tunnel or something, and I'm, uh, you know, getting ready to, you know, play a basketball game <laughs> or go wake surfing. Yeah, there you go. So uh, that's how we roll. Yeah, we're gonna let some viewers kind of pile in here. I'm watching a YouTube stream. Keith usually watches the Facebook stream, and uh, oh, he's gone. Oh, he'll be back. There he there is. There he is. All right. Um, anyway. We're going to just kind of watch these streams and answer these questions. I'm sure that the viewers are going to have a good amount of questions for you. But, you know, kind of first off, I want to thank everybody for joining us on the Boating Tips Live BTL broadcast. Um, we do this every single Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern on all the major streaming services, whether that's live on YouTube right here at Marine Max, on Facebook at Marine Max. And, of course, you can catch us after the fact at a uh, – Spotify, Apple Music, iHeartRadio, any uh, streaming source, you can find us there. And I get it. A lot of people are busy. A lot of people are not able to tune in live. That's okay. So what you're going to do, you are going to put those questions in. And Keith and I review those every single week. So um, bring them and uh, we'll, we'll get a round of them. But, uh, oh, man, we got some viewers this week. That's what I'm talking about. And how's it looking on Facebook? Uh waiting for them to come in yet <laughs> got like half a dozen or so that's it cool they'll be here well anyways yeah. i'm captain nick and uh over to my left hand right hand side that's uh captain keith needs no introduction how about it keith good afternoon everybody good to see you guys got a special guest today we've got andy wigman uh co-founder of the midwest wake surf association so thanks for hopping on andy no, thanks for having me, you guys. This is great. Really excited. Keith and I, we know a lot of things. We claim to know a lot of things. At least I claim to know a lot of things anyways. Keith actually knows them. But today is more of one of those episodes. It's different. We're going to try it out. Um, it's something that Keith and I actually don't know a ton about, and that's wake surfing. So I know that that is your bread and butter up there. It's something a lot of people are really passionate about. It's a phenomenal subculture and uh, we really can't wait to hear all about one wake surfing but more importantly what the midwest wake surf association does and and what your part is in that no definitely definitely yeah we uh we got a lot of lakes up here in minnesota not a lot of ocean uh, but if you look out on really any of the lakes or the rivers the only thing that you really see anybody doing is is wake surfing. So it's there's a lot of good things about it, and then we hit a little uh, been hitting a little turbulence with some people that uh, that you know might not like it as much of uh, as much as us. And I can get into that when we start talking about the uh, the Midwest Wake Surf Association and you know what we're doing. Uh, get hit with a little cancel it. culture, huh? <laughs> well not yet not, nothing's been canceled yet so but uh yeah we not big fans yeah. of that in the wake surfing how'd you world, how'd you get so. started with, with wake surfing in general you know well that's a good question i mean i feel kind of old uh you know in the early 2000s my buddy had a pro star mastercraft pro star slalom boat with you know one of the first fat sacks in the back uh picked me up from the dock with you know literally the first i think it was a hyperlight broadcast surfboard um you know the the surf ogs will know uh know about that board and i know it's kind of been history ever since um my friend and i we saw the world wake surfing championship come to town in 2011 uh and we basically said but we think we could plan something, you know, that fun or maybe even better and uh, started a, an event out there called the 10,000 Lakes Wake Surf Open, which is still around today. Um, but I've kind of migrated over to the lake, which I live right by um, and what's on my picture back there, if you can see the video stream, uh, Lake Minnetonka, where we hold the Minnesota Wake Surf Championship. And we're in, I think, our seventh year of uh, of that event. So. 
So where are you guys at in the season up there now, Andy? Are you guys rocking and rolling? Is it boating season or still a little nippy? We're in kind of the, uh, we're happy there's no ice on the lake, yeah. but uh, only the uh, the tougher uh, boys and girls are jumping in the water. I think the water temp is at 60 degrees. I don't know about the science, but at some point pretty soon it, it inverses or something. And it literally goes from, you know, uncomfortably cold to bath water. <laughs> and that's kind of when the the rush begins and June and July, it's crazy. I mean, thousands of boats on the lake where I go, you know, Lake Minnetonka. Um, and then it's kind of weird after the 4th of July, it kind of like decrescendos. So everybody gets, you know, 10 months of pent up boating, um, I guess, um, pent up boating demand kind of happens in those two months. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we surf usually until I guess sometimes October, um, wetsuits yeah that's so, what i was gonna yeah. ask but it's fun it's fun i mean it's um we say it we say this and i'm not sure if we really feel this way but i i always say you know if we if it was sunny and 70 like it is you know down in florida or 80 whatever it is i haven't taken a vacation in a while um you know it wouldn't be as fun when uh when it's nice so you know we put up with the snow to kind of uh you know, look forward to the summer. So we're about ready to start hitting her hard. You know, sometimes I think about that, Keith, it's like, man, like we're like in an endless summer down here where it's either hot or hotter for the most part. And we've got a 12 month boating season, which we're real fortunate, but like right. there's gotta be something special about, you know, waiting all winter to finally taking the shrink wrap off your boat and finally, you know, able to put some shorts on for crying out loud. And, you know, I mean, it's gotta make you appreciate it a little more, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you look at the different Facebook groups and stuff like that, of boaters, right? You know, you see everybody in a the spring, they're counting down, you know, they're going to get their boat dewinterized and everybody's happy and excited and all the pictures, all the boats hitting the lakes. And then, you know, in the fall, all the tears start coming and, you know, they're, they're having to pull the boats out and, you know, put them away for the next four months, five months, whatever it is, you know, but I guess that's why, you know, uh, snowmobiling and stuff like that you know you get your fix in the winter time you can go out and do that kind of stuff that's that's right we get pretty creative with the things that we do in the winter i uh, especially during uh during COVID, i think i bought 300 dollars worth of uh <laughs> snow tubes for my uh my two and a half year old i made a lot of uh a lot of a lot of tube runs in the backyard but uh definitely happier when uh when the ice is off the lake and the snow is melted Hey, so Andy, why don't you tell us a little bit exactly why the Midwest Wake Surf Association was created, what your role is in that, and basically what you guys do for, you know, the wake surfing community up there. Sure, sure. So my buddy and I, his name is Chris Bank. Uh, between him and I, we feel like we're pretty well connected in Minnesota and the quote unquote Midwest um, and there's been, you know, obviously a lot of great, um, I guess, uh, momentum with boat sales. So, yeah. you know, a lot of, a lot of new boaters out there, a lot of boaters that are getting, you know, previous boaters getting new boats and just a lot more wake surfing. So when, you know, when there's more surfing going on and the group size is getting bigger, you know, that's kind of what everybody is noticing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess in short, there's, uh, there's people um, in groups that are trying to either, you know, get new laws passed for specifically wake surfing or in, even in some cases, you know, banning wake surfing at certain times or on certain lakes. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a, an interesting experience. So my buddy and I, we basically said, hey, we know, you know, most of the dealers that are around here, um, you know, let's start with them, let's get them all on board. And it's kind of, it's probably like this everywhere where, you know, uh, there's some like competitiveness, obviously, between different brands and different dealers. But, you know, we got everybody to get on the same page, which has been really cool. And basically, they helped us get, um, you know, a really great website and we called a member portal, member hub off the ground um, to basically start this organization, which sole purpose is to promote safe and respectful wake surfing. Because a lot of the complaints are centered around, you know, loud music surfing in the same bay every night um and you know unwritten but legal kind of 
you know, rules of wake surfing. So we're, we're trying to, instead of regulate or cancel, you know, we're trying to tackle the actual things that are making, you know, non wake surfers, um, maybe not have as good of a night on the lake, um, as they would have other otherwise, you know, actually are in their own minds. So it's made a lot of progress. I've got a simple solution, Andy. Um, it'll just end all your problems. So whoever's complaining about this, this is what you're going to do. You take them, you fly them down to Florida for a weekend, you place them on any given sandbar, and then, then they'll realize how chaotic it is down here in Florida, like you talked about here on that boating boom before. I mean, it's uh, our waterways are extremely packed, and that's why it is real important for uh, us to focus on safety and stuff like that and uh, just keep everybody safe and having fun. But it's, I mean, I've never seen it as packed as it is down here. Everybody's having a good time though. And I mean, just us being in the in, in industry, it's great, you know, but uh, you know, I, I think that it's definitely cool what you're doing. I know Keith is a part of, you know, his so sober skipper program with CETO and, um, and yeah, it is absolutely crazy, but you know, everybody can still have fun and still have a good time. It's no reason to end a party, right? No, for sure. And, you know, I, there's a lot of emotions, kind of like every debate, especially in these days and times where, you know, if you get enough people that get kind of loud enough, anything really is possible. You know, and like I said, wake surfing bands, we feel are possible. So, you know, we said, hey, let's actually, let's actually listen to what some of these groups are saying, which is what we did. You know, and I put myself in their shoes um, and I you know, I agreed with some of the stuff that they were saying, which I've already outlined, you know, to some extent. And it's not rocket science, right? It's, you know, don't, you know, if you're, if you, if you think, you know, imagine yourself to be a homeowner, would you want to listen to the same boat every night's music night after night after night? You know, I, nobody really wants to do that, right? So it's things like that, that we're, you know, we're pushing through you know, our virtual modules that we have on our website, it's uh, midwestwakesurfing.com. And then we're also doing um, monthly meetups at a local brewery on the lake. And it's kind of also serving as just a spot where everybody knows where to meet to kind of get, you know, like if they have a lake association that's considering some sort of, uh, you know, wake surf related, um, I don't know, rule or something like that, they'll come you know, in person or contact us. So we're kind of just the spot where everyone knows mm -hmm. where to meet. Um, but like I said, it's been great. We also have businesses that have been signing on that, you know, want to help us promote safe and respectful wake surfing and also promote, you know, the free use you know, of our lakes by any water sport, you know, obviously unless it's nighttime. Yeah. Um, but they've signed on and basically said, hey, any members of your association, you know, we will offer a special promotion for uh for members so like yesterday we had a, a guy that owns a couple gas stations he said hey anybody that's a member of the midwest wake surf association 20 20 cents off of non-oxygenated gas so it's been uh it's been cool and it's just all a way to like i said bring everybody kind of together to you know to i really do mean it to make the lake a safe you know a safer and more respectful place i mean i feel like my dad you know, i'm talking like my dad but you know our main goal is to make sure that we you know, we don't have wake boats or wake surfers not be able to go, you know, do a really great family activity. Mm -hmm. Do you have spe specific designated areas where you can and can't, you know, wake surf? So um, it's, there's, you know, there's, there's distances from shore uh, that you're not, then sometimes it varies by lake. Um, there's been proposals and honestly, I've been staying out. We, we thought for a while at the beginning of this, that we wanted to kind of get into the politics of it and raise money for lobbyists and things like that. And we kind of thought of slept on it for, you know, a couple moons and basically said, Hey, let's, let's stay out of all the, you know, all the, the legislation and the rulemaking and just do what we know what we can do, which is talk to, you know, our network of, you know, dealers and surfers on different lakes and just try to push this message so that people can join on board with us and, and help us push that message instead of joining on with the people that are trying to, you know, make our waterways, you know, less free, you know, by banning certain water sports that, that they just personally don't like. Well, man, wouldn't you think as a homeowner, you'd be, I mean, what I would be concerned with, you know, banning all these water sports on these lakes. I mean, I'd be worried about it driving property values down. I mean, to a certain extent, I mean, yeah. I mean, man, you see it all the time in real estate. People advertise ski lake, you know, ski lake, stuff like that. 
I mean, shoot, I'd be I'd be furious if I if I built a nice house on, on a lake and then you find out that you, you can't do probably, you know, one of the things that you really the reasons you went to move there for and, you know, spend that time with your family and stuff to say, hey, you can't do that. I'd be like, what the heck? I'm going to find a different lake. No, 100 percent. And and people have told us that. And the thing that wasn't happening before we started this, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm going to call it a movement. A movement up here is is everybody deep from the dealers to, you know, just a, a person like you said, or a family that lives on the lake. They, they were all assuming that somebody else was kind of taking charge and like heading these heading these things off. And, you know, groups like the NMMA, the WSIA, they do great work, um, you know, but again, it's, it's kind of on that political side um, for the most part. Um, but, but no, 100%. Um, and then somebody, you know, we thought needed to kind of step up and say, hey, like there's hundreds, thousands of us that really don't want wake surfing regulated or banned. Um, and an example of how we know that, you know, there's a lot of people kind of on the side of free use of our waterways. We did an online petition that basically said, Hey, we, you know, sign this petition. If you, you know, um, if you do not believe in wake surfing bans and regulations and also pledge to keep surfing safely and responsibly, and we got almost 2000 uh, signatures in the last couple of weeks. And we've been careful not to post it on any, you know, national, forum so I, I looked at it the other day and you know 90 percent of the people are uh are from minnesota so there's there's a lot of people um in that boat literally and figuratively captain nick that that you just talked about that um that that are not uh, on on board <laughs> good pun again with uh with some of these proposals yeah absolutely i uh i mean i I think one of the greatest parts about, you know, you work hard, you spend the money, you know, you get that nice house on a lake. I mean, you want to enjoy it, right? Yeah. It'd be like if somebody, you know, if, if I, you know, got a nice house on the water down here and I wanted to put some snook lights up, Keith, and they said, hey, no underwater lights. That's right. I'm not going to have that. You wouldn't have everybody and their brother fishing underneath what? your dock, though. <laughs> yeah. Spread it around. Okay. What are you going to do? Catch That's right. only. Whatever. I had a guy hey. come out one day. <laughs> Is that kind of is that kind of like uh, putting a fishing uh, or uh, a Christmas tree out on the ice and then having it melt and then you make a your own little uh, reef crappie house? Yeah. Is that what it's like? Yeah, this? yeah. I had a yeah, guy one thing. night. That's what we do. Guy one night come out there with a hammer, started pounding on his dock because we were out there fishing. And those are my snook <laughs> hitting the dock with his hammer. Yeah, I don't even know what a snook it, is, but think it's, of uh, it's, think of a uh, help me out here, Keith. I don't know. Probably what you call it a pike without teeth. Yeah, yeah, a pike or a, <laughs> All right, now a pike I know. or a musky, something like that. So. We got some questions flowing in here from YouTube. Want to shout them out? We've got uh, um, Lisa Love. Happy Monday, Happy Monday, Lisa. We've got Alex Galkin. Hi all, Alex. Thanks for joining us. We've got um, um, Jeff Facility giving us a thumbs up. Thanks for joining, Jeff. We've got a WTF Mike always brings some good questions to the podcast says uh, Keith, Nick, Andy. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Mike. And um, what up, Mike? And uh, we got actually Mike coming in, correcting us as Snook is a Florida walleye. So uh, I'll take that too. So to each their own. Um, so and then I, I, I actually can't yeah. see the Facebook questions right now, Keith. So uh, we'll kind of stay on top of those as well. So, yeah, we just got, you know, Stephanie Gamovic's on here with us and Kathy Davila, Lisa, uh, a few others. Lisa actually has a question for you, Andy. Um, what kind of board are you riding nowadays? You know, I'm a, I'm a big idle surf guy. My buddy uh, started his own surfboard company in his garage right up the road. Mm -hmm um makes stand-up paddle boards and, and surfboards so he makes a, a skim style board that i ride you know i used to be all about the new equipment but i go out there now and i see all the kids rolling around you know doing tricks that i don't even know what they're called so i'm not really you know the coolest guy anymore with the newest equipment and i'm a you know i'm, a, I'm kind of a dad kind of a dad now but uh, but that board's been great and you know we use it you know, for all sorts of demos, you know, that we do, um, out here and, uh, yeah, sk skim style. That's how I roll. All right. So speaking of the kids and we were talking about earlier, all the new boaters that are, that have gotten in, you know, to boating in this last, you know, year and a half or so, um, 
what are some like safety precautions they should take into consideration when uh, getting into the sport? You know, the biggest thing that we that we are kind of noticing right now is just the sheer number of, like I said, new boats out on the water. Um, you know, and with the bigger group size, you, you know, the the smaller population of the people that either don't know actually what they're doing or you know, just don't mind breaking the rules, you know, goes up. And, you know, when a lot of these boats are new surf boats, you know, that's in my opinion, but I think I'm on the right track of, you know, why wake surfing is getting noticed in some cases, you know, negatively. So I would say the biggest thing is, is just to make sure that, you know, who, you know, whoever's driving the boat, whether it's the person, you know, that, that wrote the check uh, for it or, you know, um, a 15, 16 year old, 17 year old like myself that was lucky enough to get the keys, you know, from my dad and mom, um, basically know the rules and, you know, put themselves in the shoes of other boaters on the water. I mean, I could go on for, you know, an hour about all the other stuff, but, you know, we got a lot of rules up here as I bet you guys do, you know, down in Florida, you know, from having, you know, life jackets that are Coast Guard approved for every person on the boat, you know, to the throwable, to the fire extinguisher. And again, I, I would just say, you know, having the captain, you know, take pride in keeping the crew safe. And that's kind of what I always, like I said, from when I was 15 until until now, you know, there's knock on wood, never been a serious injury on a boat that I've been, you know, the captain of, so. Hey, speaking of regulations, what is your kill switch regulations up there in Florida? They just passed it, you know, in April that any boat under 26 foot, you know, they, you know, you, you need to wear a kill switch. Um, what are, did they pass something similar up there or no? Not yet. You know, surprisingly, that's one thing up here that we don't have to do that you guys have to do. Um, so no kill switch to my, to my knowledge, unless, uh, like I said, I've, uh, I've been chasing around my two and a half year old here for the last six months, pretty hardcore. So maybe they've passed something that I'm not aware of, but I've never, uh, I've never had to deal with that. Look at that, Nick. I think that was Coast Guard. So that would be, that might be a federal law. Oh, really? I thought it was just Florida. That I don't know. To me too. I don't know. I'm checking it out right here. But hey, while you're checking that out, Keith, we got a WKF. Mike had a question. He said, I got a really dumb question today. All right. Is being captain an earned title or can anyone be a captain? Is there schooling involved? So that's a good question, Mike, because actually it's it's a little bit different in some parts of the country. I'll tell you how Keith and I's process work. And uh, I'm actually in a renewal process right now. And there's a couple different levels that you can go about it with, you know, just before we get too in depth. But your basic captain's license is your OUPV or your occupied unexpected passenger vessel, which is uh, your six pack license that everybody calls it. That's uh, your basic license. You know, a lot of those charter boat captains that'll be taking out six people on inspected vessels going to have a six pack license. What does it take to get that license? Well, there's a class involved. Um, sometimes it takes, uh, sometimes the classes are longer than others. Sometimes they have crash courses. I did mine at sea school in St. Pete, had a great experience. And uh, that's that. And once you finish the class, that's what I like to call the easy part. Then you need a test. The test is brought up on four different parts. That is your rules of the road, your which rules of the road is the hardest one. You need 90% to pass that. That's, you know, a lot of scenarios and stuff like that. Then there's chart plotting. Then there's deck nav or deck or, general, uh, right? Deck, deck general, deck gen, deck general. Then there's nav general. So it's a four part course. And then you can go on after that. There's different master classes. There's your 50 and 100 ton, which is the same mm -hmm. test. Pretty easy to obtain just with the experience for the six pack. It's 360 days on the water for the uh, many of the master classes. It's 720 log days on the water. Um, that's pretty much all I'm well versed in. Keith, maybe you can talk a little bit more past that to 200 ton and stuff like that. I know that's a big jump, you know, spending a lot of time on big ships. Right. But, um, you know, after all that, you know, you do need to jump through a certain amount of hoops with, you know, your drug test, physical, twit card. Yep. Um, first couple, aid, CPR. First aid, CPR. Um, and then you submit that for approval. Um, and then after that, I mean, being a captain's a big responsibility, too. There's there's a little bit of liability involved. You know, you're 
at least I'm, I think that they randomly drug test the young captains a little more. So I'm always getting called into quest quest or lab corp, but, uh, and then of course there's a certain amount of responsibility with you maintaining that twit card going to the ports and stuff like that. But, uh, I definitely recommend it, you know, and, uh, you can learn a lot too. What do you think, Keith? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, recommend it for anybody to, you know, take a good course and, you know, even if you went through C school, let's say like you and I both did, and then I I had guys in my class and, and men and women this is years ago, but they just took the course mm. and never followed through with getting the actual license because they weren't really going to do anything like for profit with it. Because mm. then like you're talking about the liability factor, right? So if I'm just a weekend warrior, I'm out on my boat and somebody gets hurt on my boat or I do something stupid, I run into something. You know, if you're not a licensed captain, you know, you're not going to be held to quite the high standard you know with for the liability rise you know yeah in all those in all those classes did they teach you guys the saying red and green stay between for the buoys oh man i had a whole book with all of the different rhymes oh yeah red over red captain is captain's dead, dead. <laughs> green right, over white all right, all right. you guys you yeah. Green over right. Uh, is it fishing or night or fishing, shrimping at fishing, night? Fishing at night, yeah. Red over white, shrimping at night. Um, All that stuff. So, um, cool. With that being said, Keith, did you um did you ever find out that kill switch situation? Uh, so, WTF yep. Mike said said that North Dakota is no kill switch. What do you say about that? <laughs> New federal law took effect April one. There you go. All um, right. Mike. Hey, while we're on the topic, um, you know, we're talking about keeping a uh, a uh, tight ship here. Um, what are some of your pet peeves out on the water, Andy? Like, you know, if you're towing, if you're towing a wake surfer, or you know, or you're being towed, or you're just a passenger. I mean, are there any pet peeves of yours that uh, just kind of big no nos? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we went over the ones that are making everybody you know, the most irritated, I would say, like I said, the music and the same Bay every night. Um, you, know, you can kind of tell somebody that uh, that's new to the water um, or maybe doesn't know all the rules when you see how they pick up somebody that's fallen. Um, and I think this applies to you know, wakeboarders and water skiers as well, you know, where if somebody falls surfing, you know, if they jam on the gas to go pick the person back up in a big loop and create more chop in the water. I mean, that's the one that you see out there and you you're really grind your gears, uh, as I would say. So, I mean, that's, that's probably the worst, um, kind of up there with, um, again, with, with the music and, uh, um, and just, you know, same bay close to shore type of stuff. I mean, that's what's, making everybody upset i mean we were all there at one point though i mean whether it was us learning how to boot learning how to fish learning how to wake surf i mean every, everybody's got to start somewhere what are, what are some uh what are some pieces of advice andy for you know learning how to do things the right way instead of you know having to progress towards you know doing things the hard way yeah yeah so i mean um I can't speak for every dealer, but I know, you know, the ones up here around Lake Minnetonka, all of them that represent really all of the major brands uh, that you would, that you would see, um, they do a really great job of, you know, doing an on-water demo. Um, I know that Marine Max uh, up here in Minnesota, they do um, like women in boating nights um, and, and, you know, wake surf. There's like another dealer does wake surf Wednesdays. Um, just things like that where, you know, you can uh, you can attend it in a you know in a environment that you know that you're comfortable in, mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's just not being afraid to ask for help. I would say too, you know, you could take it to another level and um, you know come to one of our open houses. I mean, we're not saying that we're you know the ones that are gonna are, that are gonna you know teach you every rule, but if you feel like you have some kind of gaps or just kind of seeing other people do it, also shows you how you know, how to operate a boat, especially with a surfer, you know, properly. Uh, and, and for the most part, I would say the majority of the people on the lakes around here um, are all doing it, are all doing it the right way. So I think you'll learn pretty quick by just being out on Lake Minnetonka or another lake um, around us to, to basically see who's, who's doing it right and who's doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have to have an observer on the boat or can you get away with a mirror? Um, some, the, the, it, it varies. Um, really? There's more rules on this lake that I keep bringing up, which is Lake Minnetonka. It's you know, only 20 minutes from uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul Airport. It's, you know, has more coastline than I think one of the Great Lakes. Uh, WTF Mike probably knows which one it is. I'm not <laughs> sure if it's, uh, I think it might be Michigan, but uh, but uh, there's more rules on, on this lake because I think our lake, you know, has more similarities to what you guys see out there, which is a lot of big boats, you know, a lot of traffic. Um, there's a spot where everybody ties up and you know, ties their boats together and, um, you know, parties for the day. Um, but to answer your question, on Lake Minnetonka, you do need a spotter. There are some lakes where you can get by with a mirror. Okay, so somebody's got their boat on a trailer and then go from lake to lake. How are they supposed to find out the rules? Are they like posted at the boat ramps or, or how do you, how do, how do you know? Yeah. I mean, um, that they actually are posted at the boat ramp. Um, the example that you just gave is I think, you know, maybe one of only a handful of extra things they can tack on, um, that are tacked, you know, rule wise. So that is a rule that is tacked on here to, to Lake Minnetonka is, is having, um, a spotter, on the boat you know you do get some extra time to kind of research where you're going to go next because you do have to do a lot of planning not a lot of planning but you know inv invasive species are a big deal uh zebra mussels they're called um up here so there's a lot of um not a lot of, not a lot but you know you have to you have to drain your boat out at the launch and then let it dry uh you know a number of days before you can go to another oh, no lake and, uh, they're an invasive species huh yeah right yep so and that's another thing too that we're you know we're trying to push as well which is you know like a fishing boat you know you, you like, like you would with a fishing boat you would empty your live well completely to the best of your boat's ability you know we're doing the same thing here with encouraging people to make sure you know all their internal ballast um has drained out and i know that the manufacturers are also working a lot on kind of boat technology every year they're making their systems you know better in that regard which i know that the conservation um organizations up here appreciate hmm. so what interesting yeah i didn't know about that i think we have something similar down here don't we keith yeah, I, I don't know that you have to like let the, you know everything dry or whatnot, but yeah, you got to you know, like hose your trailer off and you know clean everything off before you you take off and and you know go from lake to lake. Before we get going with a couple of our uh, last questions here, we've got a epic ski dude on YouTube that says I have a 16 foot 2003 Dauntless and need a ski tow pylon. What is my best option? Um, I'd say your best option is one, you can either call Whaler directly. They're pretty good with, you know, keeping tabs of all that stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just that, like a ski tow pylon is a ski tow pylon. I'm sure that's something that could be done after market, you know, just at your, your local, you know, dealer or whatever it is. Um, you know, just make sure it doesn't, you know, avoid any warranties or anything like that. Um, so I don't know. Um, hey, Andy, so let's uh let's kind of dig in a little bit here let's talk 2021 boating season what's on your agenda what are some of those things that um the midwest lake surf association really is trying to accomplish and, and what are some exciting things on the horizon yeah yeah no so we're really looking forward to it um obviously everybody had a weird or difficult year last year um you know minnesota is you know, opening up here um, and people are very excited about it. You know, boating was really one of the only things that we were allowed to do um, last year, which everybody took advantage of. And, I, you know, all those people that bought boats are not going to sell them. <laughs> uh, so I think we're going to see a lot of boats out on the water. Um, there's an event that I already mentioned called the Minnesota Wake Surf Championship which is um, an event that I, I plan uh, out on Minnetonka. It's uh, like a grassroots wake surfing event, you know, on a very busy lake, this you know, Lake Minnetonka, where, you know, there's waves, people hit the waves and fall off their board, but, you know, they get up with a smile instead of getting, 
kind of mad, which is kind of what I've seen at some other events, you know, mainly because it's, you know, a big party basically. Um, so there's boats out in the bay, got a big jumbotron on shore. There's bands. Uh, we're going to have a boat in movie uh, on one of those nights kind of leading up to it. We've got a couple of great partnerships with some nonprofits that we tie into that whole weekend. Uh, one of them is Wake for Warriors, which we discussed um, back in the fall I was on. Um, check out wakeforwarriors.org. They, they use water sports to make positive impacts on veterans. So they bring up uh, about a half dozen vets from all over the nation, and they basically just surf for 72 hours straight, kind of culminating at my event where we have an adaptive division. Uh, to my knowledge, we were the first wake surfing event to have an adaptive division. So people with amputations or physical limitations can you know, be in a class of their own. And that's how I linked up with these guys. Um, we're also linking up with, uh, with, a with, a organization called inner city surf. So, um, we're going to bring out, uh, kids from the Minneapolis area that otherwise might not have had a chance to get out on a boat. And at the very least, just kind of take their mind off of anything kind of that's going on, um, around there. Um, but maybe at the most they meet, you know, some constructive people kind of in their lives. You know, we're with the Midwest Wake Surf Association. We're encouraging people to adopt a surfer, you know, so one of these kids that's, you know, to take out, you know, whenever they can make it. Um, we're actually, and we're going to have those two groups actually intertwine, you know, uh, the weekend, the weekend of the wake surf event. So these kids can meet, you know, some real heroes in, in the wake for warriors. So, you know, I'm getting kind of old. I never thought I'd be still planning a wake surfing event. Um, <laughs> but really, like those two kind of um, organizations and just having a positive impact and not just a big, you know, reason to go get some sun and drink some beer, which is why I kind of started it. Uh, that's <laughs> really kind of why I'm still doing it. And it's uh, I'm really looking forward to it and just having people outside. And we thought we were going to have to ticket everybody to control the you know, the number of people that are on the beach. And that's kind of, I think, uh, knock on wood, past us. And we're really looking forward to it. That's awesome, man. Maybe uh, the man behind the curtain, as I like to call it, can post a couple of those links there for the viewers on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That, yeah. So, yeah. That's uh, awesome. Wake, wake for Warriors. And then my uh, – I got a pretty big Instagram. Uh, it's MNWSC. I know that that's pretty similar to – you know, the Midwest Wake Surf Association acronym, but um, that's kind of what we got cooking up here. And, you know, thankful for Marine Max's support up here in Minnesota. They always give us the ammo we need to, um, you know, to, to throw a great event and to get, you know, these organizations off the ground. And it's uh, it's been great. So that's MNWSC? Yep, dot com. That's the... That's the wake surfing event. Um, and then Midwest wake surf, Midwest wake surfing .com oh, There we is the, go. Uh, is the, uh, the website for the, the association. Yeah. They just posted that up. Um, before we sign off here, um, we got WTFF WTF Mike that says the Minnesota boaters Bible has all that information lake to lake. So I don't know if that's anything you've heard of Andy, but, uh, I don't know. Check it out. I'm a little, I'm a little, you know, I've, I've said Lake Minnetonka probably, <laughs> 50 times I've been trying to stop saying it, but you guys can probably guess that I, uh, I don't really get, uh, out much, uh, out of my, uh, my little bubble, especially recently. Um, and I'm always trying to go on other people's boats because it's, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's an, an easier operation. I let my buddies drive me around. Welcome to my, welcome to my world. <laughs> Your boat doesn't run on. Thanks. Kathy. Doesn't, doesn't, I won't, I won't, I won't get into that. But, uh, um, well, awesome. This has been super cool. Those, um, those two links have been posting up here on YouTube. Um, feel free to, uh, drop some questions in after the fact on this. This has been a great episode. I know that you guys are probably super stoked for, um, um, the upcoming season and, uh, and keep fighting a good fight. Sounds like you're doing a lot of good and, uh, super cool what you guys are doing. No, thanks. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's fun, and this is a this is my uh, kind of hobby passion of mine, and uh, yeah, just uh, just like I said, the support of all the dealers and really everybody we've talked to. It's it's hard to argue with people that you know legitimately want to make the lake 
a safer and more respectful place. Yeah. So uh, that's well how put. we're rolling. Captain Keith, what deliveries you got going on this week before we sign off? Um, I'm going to be down at your place tomorrow. Just gonna, we're going to demo 44 Aquila. Uh, got a 350 SLX. I got a Nautic Star. I think a 20 to 2602, I guess. Um, I don't know, a couple other things I got, got going on. The, the 350 SLX is the uh, the preferred boat of the baller out kind is that of where, right? we, uh, where we uh, go boating. Yeah, if you got a 350 SLX, you're uh, you could row by Big Island and uh, get some uh, you know get some attention. Hey, I'll just say, hey, it. So, say it. So, so up there, you see more outboards or stern drives. You know, this is a little out of my wheelhouse. I'm I'm, I'm mainly uh, looking at you know 22 foot boats, right. but there's a, there's more outboards. There's some cool. I don't even know kind of how that works, but it it looks pretty uh pretty badass. Like, uh, what's the what's the new um the Mastercraft? It's Mastercraft's cruiser brand. It's the uh, Aviara. Aviara, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. yeah. So, we we stock them at our stores. Yeah, down there. got them here too. Got one right over there. We were we were out of boats last year, and we were filming. I, I did a virtual event where we had people check in to to the uh the dealer on the water we have a, a dealer out on uh out on a, one of the bays out here and we had one boat left and an aviara so we we used the aviara to like you know bring the news people out to cover the <laughs> virtual event so she was uh she's like oh this is i thought we were going to be going in like a little dinghy and we're like no we got you know we got something better than that but it was all by accident because those are the last last two boats left that were in stock really around the city so that's awesome. <laughs> One more question, Andy. What is your signature move? Like, like if somebody's pulling you, right? You're you're uh, you're on a you're on your your wakeboard, your wake surfing, your wake surfer. What is your signature move? They say, oh, there's Andy. Here comes the here comes the." I mean, I probably probably whip out a little robot <laughs> if I'm rolling by. You know, my friend uh, on shore, where you kind of just get the arm mm -hmm. and. I don't know the, the, the unhinged robot. Like I said, I used to like legitimately podium or, you know, do well in wake surfing events in like the semi pro division. And I mean, the tricks that I did back in 2012 to win like events are like the warm up <laughs> run, the warm up to the warm up for some of these kids i mean if you look up tyler stewart uh he's just graduated high school and uh you know has, has helped us launch our uh you know the midwest wake surf association and you know always comes to the events even though i mean he, he goes to events and he wins thousands of dollars he's the best wake surfer in the world i mean you go out and see a kid like that surf and you maybe just want to go and you know have have one coors light and go home basically so <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of where i'm at but i like it well, hey, man, I wish you the best of luck for this season, and I look forward to following you around and uh, appreciate you joining us today. For sure. If, if anybody's ever up in Minnesota, look up uh, the Minnesota Wake Surf Championship, and uh, we'll we'll hook you up. We'll find somebody to tow you around. Cool, man. Sounds Keith, awesome. you want to sign us off? Or hold on, hold on. Be before that, we got a big episode next week. We got Raul Bermudez from – marine max vacations talking about charter yacht ownership in the british virgin islands and the bahamas so um make sure you tune in for that one i'm real excited about that one yep that'll be a good show with raul oh yeah raul's been doing this a long time for a couple different companies been with marine max i believe for 10 years now i saw his post and uh that yep. that's gonna be that's gonna be another good episode yep so looking forward to it so yeah. Next Monday, three o'clock Eastern. Y'all tune in. Is there some sort of deal where if you're on the the podcast today that Raul like <laughs> takes you down and gives you a little? We've uh, been VIP, trying for years, you know, to, get to do groups. that. So, well, Ra Ra Raul could make that call. We'll tune in next week and ask him. That's right. <laughs> so, so, all right, Andy. Thanks a lot, bud. I learned a lot, man. Keep up, keep up the good work, and that's cool. Thanks, guys. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks for having me out. Yeah, I appreciate everybody. it.